Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified. In the previous lessons, we have discussed a pressure in fluids, including uh, atmospheric pressure, and we have seen very diverse effects of pressure in fluids from hydraulic machines, uh, atmospheric pressure, rising of fluids in a drinking straw, and much more. Now, in this lesson, we are going to look at the application of pressure in fluids in a siphon and a bicycle pump. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe a siphon and the conditions under which a siphon works. And then finally, the working, I'll explain the working mechanism of a bicycle pump. Most times, people transfer liquids from one tank to another, or especially if it's water from the river to the home states using electrically operated or diesel operated pumps. But what if one cannot afford those electrically and diesel operated pumps? In physics, we give you a solution, a process called siphoning. Siphoning is, involves the transfer of liquids from one container to another by using a height difference. Remember, we said if we have a height difference, which is H or G, if you have a height difference, if this height is low, the other one is higher, there's a pressure difference. And if you have a pressure difference, fluids can flow from where we have higher pressure to where we have low pressure. So we are going to use this process called siphoning to transfer liquids from one container to another. So for you to set a siphon or the process called siphoning, you must have two tanks. The first tank must be at a very high height. Then the second tank must be at a lower height. Then the first tank must be the one which contains the liquid that you want to transfer. Then the second tank should be the one which will be receiving the liquid that you are transferring. Then you will have a pipe which you are going to use to transfer that liquid. Now, this siphon will experience different pressures at different places. Like you can see at point A here, and we have point B, then we have point C down here. Now, can we set a particle at point A? At point A, if we have a particle there, this particle will receive equal pressure as atmospheric pressure because at this point we have atmospheric pressure. So pressure at A is equal to pressure due to the atmosphere. But can you look at a particle at B? A particle at B, if you have a particle here at B, this particle will experience equal pressure as the particle at A. Reason being, particle A and B, they are at the same height. And we said particles at the same height receive equal pressures. So pressure at A is equal to pressure at B and is the same as atmospheric pressure. So we have said pressure at A is the same as atmospheric pressure and is the same as pressure at B because pressure at B and A, they experience the same height. Now, can we have a particle at C? If we have a particle down there at C, this particle is going to experience two types of pressures, if you can see. Above this particle, we have this height H. So above the particle, we have some height here H, and we have a liquid there. So particle at C, if I can write here, particle at C, first it will experience pressure due to the height, that is H rho G. But now, above this height, where this height reaches at point B, we still have a liquid beyond it. And the liquid which is beyond B, we have said it, it exerts, if you have a particle at B, it means it will receive pressure which is of the liquid above it. And the liquid above it, we have said it, it, it exerts pressure which is the same as pressure at A. And the pressure at A is the same as atmospheric pressure. So at point, at, at point C, the particle will receive pressure due to the height plus pressure at B. But since pressure at B is the same as atmospheric pressure, then we can say particle at C will receive pressure due to the height difference plus pressure at B, which is the same as atmospheric pressure. Pressure 
of the atmosphere. So the particle at sea will experience two types of pressures: pressure at at uh, at B, which is the same as atmospheric pressure, and then uh, pressure due to the height above it. Now the pressure difference between point B. Now you can see that we have if you have point B and point C, point C has a higher pressure because if you want the pressure at at B, in this case you will take pressure at C, you subtract uh, H rho G, then you will get pressure at B. So pressure at B will be lower. So the pressure difference between point B and point C is the one which facilitates the flow of the fluid from the upper tank to the lower tank. Now, when you are setting your siphoning process, you must make sure that these conditions are met for it to work perfectly. The first condition is that the tube must be filled with the liquid first. This tube you have here, this tube must be filled with the fluid, all the liquid that you have. And the reason why we must fill it is to create the pressure difference. You are going to create the pressure difference, sorry. So if from point B and C, if there's no liquid here, you are not going to get the pressure difference, which will facilitate the flow of the of the liquid to the tank uh, at point C. So you must fill it first. Then two, there must be a difference in level of liquids in the two containers. There must be a difference in level. The first tank, the amount of liquid in the first tank must be different, not different from the level of the liquid in the second tank. Otherwise, there will be no space where the fluid will be moving to. Then the third one is that the end of the tube, end of the tube in the first container here, it must remain below the liquid surface of the upper container. This first container or the upper container, this tube must remain at the base. Who can guess why? Look at this. If you put it at this level here and the liquid above this point flows to the second tank, which is at point C, then the remaining liquid will not be in contact with this tube. Then it means it will not move out. And again, remember, below this tank, that's where we have a... Uh, the maximum height so pressure at the top or at the bottom of this tank will be very high if you put it up here atmospheric pressure and the pressure due to this liquid will be very low so it, the, the liquid will move with the low pressure in fact sometimes it might not move so you put it at the base so that it experiences the maximum height maximum height means it will receive or it will be pushed with a lot of uh, pressure so this has led us to the second application of uh, pressure and we are going to discuss a bicycle pump. A bicycle pump applies the idea of pressure difference in its operation, especially in inflating bicycle tires and even a football ball. So the first thing that a student must know is the part of uh, a bicycle pump. The first thing is we have two parallels, parallel A and parallel B, parallel A is in front of a leather washer, parallel B is uh, at the back of the leather washer, and what you should know, parallel B is at, at the atmospheric pressure. The pressure B at parallel B is always the same as atmospheric pressure. Then we have a handle, we have a spring, then we have a nozzle, a nozzle which connects to the tire valve. Now, what happens when you pull out? So when you are pulling this handle out, what will happen, the space or parallel A will expand. The air inside barrel A will expand. Expanding means it will occupy a large, a large volume. When it occupies a large volume, it means the particles of air will be distributed at a very wide uh, volume. When particles are very far away from each other, it means here we will have low pressure because particles are not under pressure, they are distributed. We will have low pressure. Now, this low pressure at point B, since it's at, at atmospheric pressure, parallel B will have high pressure. Parallel B will have high pressure. Now, due to difference in pressure between B and A, now uh, the, the, the pressure will move. All the air pressure will move from where it is high, from parallel B to parallel A. Now, 
when now you come to push in in the second diagram here when you push in when you push in you are compressing the air at the parallel a when you compress air you are increasing pressure so here now we will have high pressure when you are pushing in at this point we will have high pressure now inside the tire to this point here inside the tire we have low pressure because we want to feel it we have low pressure now this high pressure will compress or will place the valve inside the tire and the high pressure here now will move into the tire and now when you pull back again when you pull back how or you pull out air at a will again expand when it expands pressure will be low now look at this why can't pressure from the from the bicycle tire come into parallel a remember when you are pulling out you are creating low pressure at point a and the valve of the bicycle uh, uh, tire is designed in a way that when there's high pressure inside and low pressure outside the valve closes but when there is high pressure outside low pressure inside it opens so the car or the, the the valve of the bicycle tire is very special in a way that when there's high pressure inside it closes when there's low pressure when there's high pressure outside it opens so in this case when you pull out pressure at a will be low so the valve will close now when you pull in pressure at a will be high so pressure outside is high inside the tire will be low it will open and the air will enter into the bicycle so that is how simply a bicycle pump works now i'm leaving you with an assignment and i will want you to attempt it and if you get any difficulties then you will get a solution at ECLIMU learning simplified website the question is there is an increase in temperature of the pump parallel during pumping when you are pumping there will be an increase in temperature explain so attempt that question if you get any difficulties you can ask a question below this video and then we will uh, be able to respond to it as soon as possible so that marks the end of our lesson today welcome to ECLIMU. learning is now simplified